still morning. Good morning. Uh, last but least, I am uh, Kevin Carman. Uh, I'm a dean of the College of Science at LSU, and I'm also a parent and an educator in Louisiana, and I speak to you uh, in, in all of those contexts today. Uh, I, too, want to join uh, previous speakers in thanking Zach and applauding him for his extraordinary energy and, and taking this initiative on, and uh, a special thanks to, to Senator Peterson for carrying this, this bill forward, which is critically important. Um, I'm going to repeat a few things that you've heard and maybe introduce a couple of uh, new thoughts uh, uh, to consider. Um, again, I want to emphasize that I'm speaking as a parent, as a scientist, and as an educator. And in all of these capacities, I'm deeply concerned that my children and all of the children of Louisiana receive a high-quality education that includes a current and compelling curriculum of the sciences and all other disciplines. The Science Education Act undermines that objective, and the teaching of evolution in particular and I'll focus my remarks particularly on evolution. The proponents of the Science Education Act apparently feel that biology can be taught and understood in the absence of evolution. I beg to differ. Evolution is as integral to the understanding of biology as atoms are to the understanding of chemistry. Most of us think of evolution, may think of evolution, as something that happened in the past, and we see visions of dinosaurs and saber-toothed tigers, um, and when we think, and, and, and indeed that is certainly part of it. But evolution is also a vibrant component of biology and of our life today. Evolution allows us to understand why harmful bacteria, mosquitoes, and weeds inevitably develop resistance to antibiotics, pesticides, and, and herbicides. It helps us to understand why our own DNA is largely a junk pile of dysfunctional genes that have accumulated over millions of years. It helps us to understand the ecological consequences of disasters such as the Gulf oil spill. And perhaps most importantly to us humans, evolution provides us with a vast potential toolkit of solutions to the challenge that we, challenges that we face in the areas of healthcare, energy, and the environment. It is simply impossible to truly understand biology, let alone the history of our planet, if we do not have a deep appreciation of evolution. Of more immediate concern, students who lack this understanding will not be competitive in this amazing age of biotechnological advances. Proponents of the Science Education Act claim that it provides an understanding to teach the, the controversy, as they phrase it, on topics such as evolution, and to provide teachers with what they refer to supplemental materials. Unfortunately, the controversy to which they refer is a fabrication of their own making. It saddens me that a few misguided individuals are using this legislation to drive a wedge between science and, re and religion, and I'm very pleased that many leaders of the religious community have stepped forward in support of the repeal of the Science Education Act. I also, as a scholar, had to do a little bit of research on this, and uh, I thought I'd look uh, and see what sort of publications that might have appeared on intelligent design versus evolution. And there's an online resource called the Web of Science where you can look up scientific publications over the last hundred years. And I started looking for uh, publications on evolution and quickly found that I saturated the system and ultimately limited my search to publications at, at, at over $100,000. You shut down the, 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 pro the, the program. Uh, over 100,000 publications, it shuts down. So I just looked, searched from 2010 on and found that there were 60,880 publications uh, that were published with the topic of evolution. I then searched on intelligent design. I found 24 articles. All 24 of those articles focused, focused on the debate, uh, the controversy that we're talking about today. None of them offered any scientific evidence in support of, of, of intelligent design. And that is because intelligent design creationism, or whatever label one might assign to it, is not science. As a biologist, it is difficult for me to add anything to the eloquent and compelling argument made by the 42 Nobel, Nobel laureates uh, who have urged the repeal of the Science Education Act. Dr. Uh, Sir Harry Croto from Florida State University was supposed to be here today to speak. He couldn't make it. As a graduate alum of FSU, I wore garnet in his honor. Um, but as an LSU uh, a, a devotee, I hope he understands where I root on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> but he and his, Dr. Croto and his fellow Nobel laureates represent some of the greatest minds of our generation, and their testimony alone should be sufficient to settle this matter. But it won't be. Nor, dare I say, will my remarks or any of those of our, my esteemed colleagues who have, have spoken today. Nevertheless, this is a battle that we must win. I therefore urge all of our elected officials in the legislature, as well as, as, well as Governor Jindal, to do what is right for our children and the best interests of our state and nation, support Karen Kopp, Carter Peterson, and Zach Coughlin, and Senate Bill 70, and abolish the Science Education Act. Thank you.
finish, I'd just like to thank everyone who's spoken today, and I'd also like to mention there's a couple of people who really wanted to be here today and just couldn't make it. As Kevin Carr mentioned, Sir Harry Croto, a Nobel Laureate in Chemistry, had wanted to be here, and unfortunately, it, we could not, he could not make it down here. We also had uh, Reverend Walton Gaddy, who is a Baptist minister from Monroe, and also the president of the National Organization, Interfaith Alliance, who expressed he's, all, he's been a strong supporter of the repeal, and he wishes he could have been here to support us. Now, thank you all for coming down here, and what we need to do is tell our legislators to repeal this law, because we can repeal this law. We have, we have a lot of work to do. Thank you, Karen. But uh, we can repeal this law. As Zach mentioned, I want to thank him again. We do have a lot of work to do, and it doesn't end here. This is just the beginning of uh, uh, a continuation in, in our advocacy. And certainly there's a need to email and make phone calls to all legislators, encouraging them to support Senate Bill 70, but also to visit with them and go and spend some time with them and answer some of the questions. Because remember, the other side that is, is promoting the, the, the other side of this the opposition to this bill is very strong. It's a social issue that many legislators are getting pressure to support. Now, what are we, where are they going to stand on the side of science, on the side of the Nobel laureates, on the side of the biologists and the scientists at LSU, our flagship that we say we support? Or are you going to stand on the side of 24 articles? I'm with the 60,000. <laughs> what we have to do is get to them, spend time with them by phone, in person, and emails, laying out the legitimacy of these arguments and the need to move Louisiana forward and to stand strong with us. Before we're going to give you enough notice when the bill gets hot, when the bill gets scheduled, so that we hope that. All of you can be there in the committee hearing, and maybe we will be able to get others to come and some of those Nobel laureates to come and testify in the committee. So we'll give you ample time, but don't stop here. This is merely one point in our advocacy. But thank you again for being here. We really appreciate your support. Thank you.